Continuing on in talking about reproducible research, it's important for you to understand a certain type of writing documents that's called markdown. Um, for this, I want to start by talking about what are called markup languages. So you're probably very familiar with writing documents in Google Docs or in Word. That's called a WYSIWYG system, a W-Y-S-I-W-Y-G. That stands for what you see is what you get. And so when you're doing formatting in that style, you really see immediately on the document exactly what it's going to look like. So let me give an example of that. Let's open up a Word document. So if I wanted to say, um, let's see, these words are in bold. If I want to make this bold, I highlight the whole thing and I have something I can click on. Uh, let's see right here. And that changes it so it's in a bold format. In markdown languages, excuse me, in markup languages, of which markdown is one, Instead of doing that, what you'll do is you will actually put in little markers that specify how to format things. So I'm going to show an example of this. I'm going to show it in R right now, and it's in an R Markdown document. I'm going to teach you how to open those later. So don't worry about that part right now. I just want you to pay attention to how we're doing the formatting. So in this case, if I wanted to say these words are in bold without any formatting, I can go through and knit the document. Let me save it. So I can knit it and you can see that it hasn't done anything special with the formatting. If I want to format that to actually put it in bold, I do these little symbols that mark it up. So for markdown, to put something in bold, you put asterisk on either side. You put two asterisks in either side. And then maybe we want to say this word is in italics. If you want to put something in italics, you put just one asterisk on either side. So now if we save and run this, you'll see that it's done that formatting. It's put the first part in bold, and then it's put that second word in italics. And it's doing this not because we kind of like pointed and highlighted something. Um, it's doing it because we put those little markers in. So we're doing everything here in a plain text file where we can't kind of like put in that extra formatting by pressing on buttons. And so instead what we do is we put that right in the file itself. And then when it's rendered into the output, the engine that's doing that rendering, which is Pandoc in this case, since we're going to HTML, that does that translation and puts it in the final format. So again, I think that the, the heart of this is right down here in markup languages, you're marking up the document directly with these little symbols to show the formatting that you want, rather than having buttons you can press and being able to see it immediately in the document you're writing in. There are a number of different types of markup languages. HTML is a very popular one, and we'll look in just a second at some examples for that. This is the language that's used for writing a lot of websites. Uh, LaTeX, some people also pronounce it LaTeX, that's another very popular one. It's extremely popular in certain fields for scientific publishing. So in mathematics and statistics, a lot of journals will accept articles that have been formatted in that style. And then the one that we're going to start with, that we're really going to focus on in this class, is called Markdown. So some of the others are very powerful and let you do a lot of things, but it does take a while. It's like learning another language to learn all of the different things that you can do with them. Uh, Markdown's really simple. It can get done probably 90% of what you would want to do. Um, doing things like bold and, and itemized list and pieces like that. But it doesn't have a lot of extra frills, and that means you can learn it really quickly. I have found that students can typically learn very, very quickly how to use Markdown itself. And then it becomes a powerful tool to put in with, um, with Knitter and R Markdown documents. So let's look at an example of HTML just again to get that idea in. Um, so this is from CSU's website. And this is what the document actually looked like. Um, this was a case from a few years ago, and our mascot here is called Cam the Ram. 
Um, and he happened to die on the day of our big football rivalry with UC Boulder. And I still think that there might have been some shenanigans going on with that. But in any case, there was a very nice story that came out when he passed away. Um, and this was what the story looks like if you looked on the web on the web page that particular day. They had his obituary up there and a nice picture and all of that. Now, if you looked at the code, the HTML that was actually behind the scenes, that was creating this the, this uh, page that was then rendered by your web browser, this is what it looked like. And you can see here, there are these elements that we were seeing in the website, but they've been marked up with these different markers. So like the paragraph here that talked about Cam the Ram, that's surrounded by these paragraph tags that indicate that that is a paragraph. Um, there was one, one uh, web link that could click through somewhere else. And so that's got this href here and it's with a link. So again, these little markers are saying how it should be formatted, but then the text that you write is actually just in plain text. When you are looking at websites, you can check this out a little bit. So I have pulled up what the CSU website looks like as of today. Uh, you can see we've just gotten there with the, the, um, the address in our web, in our web browser. But depending on the browser that you use, with most browsers, you can actually look and see what that source underneath looks like. So if we want, we can go in and go to View and the Developer View. And I'm doing this in Chrome, but I think there are analogous tools you can use in some of the other browsers. And then we can view the source. You can see that's opened another page for us. And now we've got that HTML, the stuff that's actually underneath that your browser is rendering to get there, and the stuff that would be written to show it. Um, and we can scroll down a little bit and we can see some of the sections of text. And of course, this has a lot of extra stuff too that's making this fancy elements of the page. But uh, we can get down and we can see some of these paragraphs, the things about the CSU COVID response and all of that. And you can see again how that's put within those markers. This does mean that to learn how to use Markdown, you're gonna need to use some of, uh, learn some of those conventions, learn some of those little tags you put around things. So some of the ones that we've already looked at were to do the text in bold by doing asterisk on both sides, to do italics by doing one asterisk on each side. You can also put in hyperlinks. And for hyperlinks, what you'll do, let's see, you can put in here's CSU's web page. All right, so right now I've just put the text, but let's say that we wanted to make this a clickable link where it's gonna click through to a website. We need to get the web address first. And so we can go back and we can take a look and grab that. All right. So you copy that. And what you do then is you put the text that you want to show up that somebody would click on. You put that in square brackets. And then you put the web address you want to go to right after that in parentheses. So we can save that and run it and you can take a look. And now we've got that link. And when you click on it, it will take you to the website. You can also put headers in, and you do this with hashes. So we might want to call this, uh, let's see, section one. And then maybe down here we want to have a section two. And maybe we even want to have subsections in, inside. So maybe we want to have subsection one and then subsection two. All right, so again, we can save and knit it. And you'll see that those markers turn into the section heads. You can also create lists, either itemized list or bulleted list. For bulleted list, you will want to use a hyphen in front of each item in the list. And you need to set off that hyphen section so that you've got a blank line above and a blank line below. So we can do an example in here again. Let's do that in one of the subsections. Uh, here is an example of a list. So we'll do one first where we have bullet points and not numbers. So we can just come in here and say item one in the list, and then maybe item two and item three. In each case, first notice how I've left a blank line before and a blank line after, and then inside this, I'm doing a hyphen and a space, and then I'm putting what I wanna put. So if we knit that, you can see that that's created a bulleted list. And then if you wanted instead to have something that was a numbered list, you can go in and do that too. Just replace those hyphens with the numbers. So we can do one, two, and three. And you see that's done that more kind of like numbered list. 
You can find more of these if you go up into help in the cheat sheets. There is an R Markdown reference guide. And that'll take you to our studio, which has a PDF of it. But you can see it's got all of these over here, where on the left hand side, it gives you what you would actually write in the plain text file in your R Markdown file. And then on the right, it shows you what it'll look like when it comes out. And you can see there's not a long, long list of the things you can do here, but it does cover a lot of the things that you might want to do when you're writing one of these, um, creating one of these documents. There are a few other simple things that you can do. Again, we were just looking at some of those on that, uh, that cheat sheet reference. And we're gonna cover a few more in this course, um, including this week. So some of the other things that you can do, you can include mathematical equations, you can put in tables. If you have a figure that you're not creating from R, but instead are have in an outside file and wanna bring in, you can bring that in. You can put in block quotes if you're quoting a long section and you wanna kind of set it apart. And again, the, the key reference for looking for those and to, to kind of get yourself familiar with them as you're learning how to use R Markdown is to look for that R student Studio, our Markdown reference list. It's a really nice guide. It's very short, but gets you through a lot of the formatting you can do.